name is Maisie. Hi, I'm Miss Malia. Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Sumaya. Hey everyone, it's Miss Malia, and today me and my food court friends are going to show you how to do some awesome activities with dirt. We'll do a science experiment called a soil shake. We'll find out if food actually comes from dirt, and we'll end with a sing-along. I'm sitting at the school garden today on some beautiful soil. Soil is made of decomposed plants and leaves and wood, but it's also got shells, stone, sand, and clay in it. It's also full of living creatures. Some are so big that you can see them, and some are really, really tiny, like good bacteria. Do you want to be a soil scientist? Today I'm going to show you how to do an experiment that will help you see what any soil is truly made of. You're going to need a clear see-through container. I'm using a jar, but you could also use an old peanut butter jar, a bottle, anything, as long as the label is off and it's clear. Some water, about a cup of soil, and permission from an adult to dig up a small spot to get soil. You could dig a small spot in the garden where nothing is planted yet, the lawn or the woods, or the driveway wherever you're curious about. To do the soil experiment, take some soil and put it in your container until the container is about a quarter of the way full. Add water until the container is almost full. Put the lid on. And shake it up for about a minute. We shake it to mix up all of the tiny particles. Then we let it sit for at least an hour and we watch as the particles separate into layers. When the particles settle in our experiment, how will we know which one is which? Well, Miss Maggie is going to show us the four main parts of soil to help us understand. Hi guys, it's Miss Maggie and today we are gonna learn how to be a soil scientist. So there are four main types of soil. We have the organic matter, which also can be known as the roots and the leaves. Next we have a sand and pebbles, which are the largest, largest particle size that you can find in soil. Next we have silt, which is a little bit smaller. And then the very, very fine soil particles, very, very small, tiny particles are clay. And yes, that is the same clay that you could use to create pottery. In my drawing here, we have an illustration of each of the particle sizes. You see organic matter has sticks, leaves, roots, and some plants. Over here you have this, the sand, which is the largest particle size. You can see the circles that I drew are pretty large compared to the rest of them. We have the silt right underneath our organic matter, and that's the medium-sized particles. And then finally, our clay, which is the very, very, very fine and small particle sizes. As our experiment gets underway, you're going to see the soil separate into the different categories that we talked about earlier. So what do you think would settle to the bottom first, based on the particle size? What do you think will float? Let's take a look at my soil experiment after four hours. Do you think your predictions were right? Can you tell which layer is organic matter? Which layer is sand? Which layer is silt? And which layer is clay? I'll show you what I think. At the bottom here is the heaviest layer. Sand, gravel, rocks, that sort of thing. Next are the particles that weren't quite as heavy. This is the silt layer. Silt can be made from really, really tiny organic matter particles. It can also be stones, shells, minerals, and things like that. The next layer, can you see that? It's really small. This next layer, the particles are even smaller than the previous two layers. It's 
the clay layer. And up top are those large organic matter particles that haven't really broken down yet. Our school garden soil is great for growing plants because the silt has some great nutrition for the plants and the sand helps it drain water. Now let's check in with Maggie to see what kind of soil shake she made. I wonder if it will be different than mine. I got my soil from my lawn. I chose a spot that has less grass so there wasn't as much organic matter in my soil shake. This is my soil shake experiment after letting it sit overnight. So it looks like I have a decent amount of organic matter on the top. You can see that with all my sticks and leaves sticking out. I have a little bit of clay as you see this very very thin light layer and right after that you could see the silt and then after that I have a lot of sand so primarily my soil is composed of sand hi it's Miss Measy for this part of today's activity I want you to trace what you had for lunch as far back as you can who made your lunch either yesterday or today was it you? Was it a parent? Was it someone from the school cafeteria? Was it the farmer who grew the food that you're eating? All those people are really important in getting your food to your plate, but actually none of them really made your lunch. Do you know who did make your lunch? You're right, it's the soil. All plants need soil to grow, and that's where all our food comes from. So for today's activity, let's trace what we had for lunch as far back as we can to where it came from. All you need is a pencil or some colors and a piece of paper. Let's get started. So let's start today with my lunch, which was peanut butter toast with honey, carrot sticks, orange slices, and a nice glass of milk. The peanut butter toast, as we mentioned, has three parts. It has the bread, which is the toast, has the peanut butter, and of course the honey. So in order to trace where it comes from, we need to break it into those three parts and figure out where each of those three parts comes from. Do you know where bread comes from? Yeah, bread is made out of flour, which comes usually from, a, uh, from wheat, which is a plant. It's the seed of the plant, which grows in the ground. Similarly, peanut butter comes from peanuts, which are actually the root of a plant. So they also grow in the soil. Then we have honey. What makes honey? Yeah, bees make honey. And in order to make the honey, they need pollen, which they collect from flowers. And flowers, as we know, grow in the soil, which really means that all three of these things come from our soil or our dirt. This is our nice pile of dirt. I just added a few worms. So next are the carrot sticks. I had some nice orange carrots and some yellow carrots. Where do you think carrots come from? Yeah, carrots come from, um, they're the, like peanuts, they are the root of a plant, which also means that they have uh, leaves that grow above the ground. Since they're the root of the plant, that means they also come directly from the soil. Our orange slices come from whole oranges, do you know where oranges grow? Yeah, they grow on a tree. Kind of like apples grow on a tree. And as we know, trees are firmly rooted in the soil, which means that our oranges can also be traced back to the soil. And last we have milk. What makes milk? Yeah, cows make milk. But cows can't just make milk. They need to eat things in order to make their milk. And what cows eat are grasses and grains, which, like we mentioned for wheat, all grow in the soil. And that's everything. So now we've traced back how all four parts of my lunch came all the way from the soil. I can't wait to see how you've traced your lunch back to the soil. Now I'm going to teach you a song called Soil Made My Lunch. First, I'll teach you the words and the sign language to the song, and then we'll add the lyrics. It goes like this. Soil made my lunch. Soil made 
my lunch. Thank you, Soil. Thanks a bunch for my salad, my sandwich, my milk, and my munch. Because Soil, you made my lunch. Awesome. Let's add the music now. Soil made my lunch. Soil made my lunch. Thank you, Soil. Thanks a bunch for my salad, my sandwich, my milk, and my munch. Cause Soil, you made my lunch. Soil, you made my lunch. Now everybody join. Soil made my lunch. Soil made my lunch. Thank you, Soil. Thanks a bunch for my salads, my sandwich, my milk, and my munch. Cause Soil made my lunch. Soil made my lunch. Yay! Thank you, everybody.